Hello and welcome back to Everybody Loves Ryken, our 5th edition live play that meets most Tuesday nights. <clears throat> We've been off the last few, as people have been traveling and busy with stuff, which is fine. It represents in the real world our time skip ahead to the day of the final battle. The last time we met, the party had determined... <clears throat> that they had completed all of the tasks that required individualized attention uh, prior to their training montage that would cover the final um, nine days? Uh, no, 12 days. The final 12 days <clears throat> of the period they had before the... Army of the Four Queens would be in place to meet with them. They met briefly with the Army of the Four Queens, <clears throat> generals to generals, and got a... I'm sorry, I'm still kind of dying over here. Um, got a... relatively solid uh, deal worked out with them. <clears throat> came to an understanding about the discrepancies that were happening and why they weren't dealing with uh, Tatsuya anymore. Uh, so they seem like they're going to be reliable. And so, you spend the remaining 12 days at no music. That's a sad thing. Um, <clears throat> you spend the remaining 12 days training yourselves, training with your army, uh, and doing those things which make you feel prepared for what could potentially be a fatal encounter with demigods. You still suffering from the heat? <laughs> uh, what about the heat? <laughs> I was wondering if you were done or if you were suffering from the heat. Ah, it's like it's caught in my throat. It really sucks. Um, anyway, I apologize. It was very bad timing for that to happen. Um, I have spoken with Vendar, who has told me that he will uh, work closely <clears throat> with his simulacrum, Simdar, and Jebel as much as he can to continue making... Uh, all of the uh, grenades and other potions and the like uh, that you will need uh, for the upcoming battle. And uh, we've worked out how many you keep. So, <clears throat> I will remind the party and the audience uh, that Vendar has come into possession of uh, a good deal of uh, reagent of material for making these explosives of his uh, with no real source apparent to those who are close to him, but uh, and that he has made this deal uh, with a devil to do this, but part of that deal was that the rest of the party does not remember the deal, does not remember meeting with a devil <clears throat> only knows that an agreement, uh, a agreement was made with an unknown entity that gave them back Rowan, and that they any uh, any cost had been paid and had not been paid by them. That is what they were allowed to know. <clears throat> Hopefully, uh, and the demon, devil seemed to hope that that would um, keep them from asking too many questions. However, this does not prevent uh, anyone from noticing the other portion of the deal that they don't remember, uh, which is that whenever he feels like it, the devil is going to come, either himself or send an agent, to collect the fruits of... Uh, some portion of the fruits of Vendar's labors uh, <clears throat> in his development of poisons, explosives, alchemical, what-have-yous for the rest of ever. And so, Jebel, 
given that you are the one working most closely with Vendar and Simdar, uh, you would notice that you guys are working at a feverish pace, pumping out uh, grenades just at an ungodly rate. <clears throat> and at the end of all this, you feel like the pile that he's got to distribute is significantly smaller than it should be. And you are not sure where the rest has disappeared to, and he is not mentioning it. Wait. He also asked for discretion, and he's... The deal didn't include him can't not being able to tell us, right? Yeah, I'm not yeah. allowed to tell anybody. So, handle as you will, but it is going to be impossible, Vendar, for you to conceal that your supplies that you are working very hard to create, and you require uh, Jebel's help to meet your quotas, uh, <clears throat> self-established quotas, um, uh, that the, the portions of this product are just disappearing. Are, is, is, so, are, are we... What uh? What is the setup for the scene? At why we're bringing this up again? The setup. Uh, I'm explaining one portion of what I know was going on during the twelve days that intervened between your last meeting, <clears throat> uh, our last session, but your last meeting with the Army of the Four Queens, uh, and uh, the uh, the day of departure, where you will poof yourself and your army uh, via advanced magical teleportation. Uh, into Evangard. Got that. All right, and I know our, we were learning languages in the mean during this period of time. Um, was I able to finish learning all of Aquarian? I think I was able to, right? And I could have learned a little more of something else, but I chose not to. Okay. <clears throat> um, for that, you'll have to tell me. You, I've, I've made everyone aware that you can uh, get uh, three lessons a day. And you know that you need 31 lessons total to be fluent in a language. And we were, what, seven or 14 days still, right? Yeah. I'll call it 13, because the 14th day is the day you leave. Yeah, so 13 times 3, so 36, yeah. So I would have just learned Aquarian then, okay. It's 39, actually. Oh. Uh. I, I I will just say that I just learned Aquarian. The, uh, yeah. 48. Aquan. Aquan. I learned Aquan. All right, you were learning that from one of the Tritons. Yeah. No, actually from Clevergill himself, because he said he didn't he say Oh, he right, yeah, yeah. Yes. Clevergill wanted to teach you himself. Uh, Aquarian. Aquan. Aquarian would be an, a dialect uh, <laughs> only for uh, domesticated. This sounds very like <laughs> glass like. I don't know why. <laughs> like domesticated tridents. <clears throat> Good gosh. <laughs> what? Those are people! <laughs> I was going for the instrument. <laughs> I got you. I'm just thinking, what do you mean domesticated tritons? They're already people. <laughs> Alright, thank you for the clarification. Continue. Losing my mind over here. I filled in a six in there somehow. Losing my mind, losing my mind. Anyway, so... Uh, yes, that was to um, establish that Bendar has his supplies that he intended to make, uh, that Jebel helped with that, and that uh, at the end of it you have significantly less Jebel than you would have anticipated, meaning that you were right there making it. Um, <clears throat> since you're at roughly half of what you made, and the rest of you were... Training with the army, taking language lessons, and preparing yourselves uh, for this uh, reckoning with the children of Tiamat. So, let us quickly go over uh, what you are doing during that training montage. And so I mean montage me. So we know that Riken learned Aquan. Excuse me? Yukikaze learned Aquan. 
It's so like, great. Just standing behind him the whole time. Still oh, can't tell the difference between the dragonborn. He, he is so dragonborn bornist. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> Riken, how many years has this been? Ten years? <laughs> and he still gets a ring? Fuck you too. Too long. <laughs> <laughs> Look. Names are hard. Anyway, Yuki Kaze, General, learns Aquin. What else would you do, since that takes up only three hours of your 12 hours or 18, 16 hours of uh, consciousness? Uh, that would be, I would just be, I'd be sparring myself to hone my own skills. I would also do it with large numbers of the army to practice multiple enemies and also to give them more battle experience. Mm -hmm. I will be, um... Uh, just uh, observing, learning some commanding skills from Clevergill, uh, <clears throat> picking, up, picking up on things subtly. I'm not going to directly ask him for anything. Gotcha. Um, and I'm going to just uh, just continue working on training the army and myself, and that's it for me. Okay. I believe <clears throat> that we went over in our last session that people were doing certain kinds of training and I was allowing people to get certain skills or stats. That rings bells to me. Yeah, I didn't I didn't get I don't have anything in particular in mind. I don't know if anything I would have done would have get I, I don't have anything in mind is what I'm getting at. Okay. Alright, well we'll uh it outside then uh <clears throat> vandar you uh you did your you are devoting almost all of your day every day uh to this alchemical endeavor <clears throat> uh, some number of days uh into it um as you know people do continue to trickle in uh the the army is not static <clears throat> There is attrition, there is addition as boats arrive from the mainland, uh, still answering uh, Tatsuya's call and bringing supplies. Uh, remember the gold that you had to pay, that was a logistical, uh, that was a logistics gold to get supplies for the island on the whole. So of course ships are still <clears throat> showing up with uh, those supplies and more people who want to join your army. Um, so among that, uh, Lynn will appear. Yay, Lynn. So you are able to spend time with her. And not <clears throat> leave her uh in the dark in Bromdor uh and never come back, potentially. Laramentis. Yes. Got 14 days. You're gonna learn spells. Uh, you're gonna train in magic. Uh, just uh, montage me. So uh, I know that people had been requesting lessons in Draconic. So I think Laramendus would probably be um, pulling together people for that to essentially run a classroom for when we're doing that. I imagine that there are other officers that are also interested in firming up some Draconic, especially uh, the older Draconic that Laramendus would be more familiar with. Um, so I imagine that that's uh, some amount of time of his days is teaching uh, Draconic. He's very interested in participating in the magical instruction of the uh, wizards and really, I guess, really anyone who's casting magic. Um, but wizards are the most likely that he could have any kind of assistance in in training in the army. He's particularly interested in the way that the Tritons teach magic uh, and getting a, a gauge on that. Um, and focused very much on helping them to do what they're they're trying to do there. He's not trying to 
take any of the reins with that. Um, he'd probably, after lessons, go and um, have more in-depth conversations with the better, the, the more magically powerful Tritons to try and gauge what he can do to help, what they might need his assistance with at a higher level of magic. So he's probably trading spells with the Tritons um, that can actually benefit from some of the more powerful magic that he has to bear. Uh, as for spells, it probably would have been a good idea in the time that we were off for me to look through the wizard spell <laughs> list and, and <laughs> see if there were any that I wanted. If I, it was only a month, so it's not like you had that much time. <laughs> yeah, no, I just... There was no time for that entirely reasonable uh, thing to do, so I'm totally not going to pull up the wizard spell list while other people are talking <laughs> and see Unthinkable. if there's anything that we might want to do. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> That would be simply, like, who would need to do it? Would would, you would only need to do that if you'd, click, 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 you know, click. forgotten something, which obviously you didn't. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> you know how many spells you need for teleportation? It's a, he... He is a very utility-focused wizard, so he has a lot of that. Um, I do think that he has not shared his spell with the Tritons. Um, at least, at least over this time frame due to how other people have reacted to things. Um, but other than that, he's very open with the spells that he has. Okay. And that sounds good. Thank you. Jebel. That's me. What is Jebel, the druid, doing over the course of these 14 days? There, You know that <clears throat> You've been in contact uh, with some rep representatives of the wildlife of the ocean at this point, um, and there are other creatures on the island, but you feel like um, there was, you know, the, the coming of the blue dragon, you know, a month or two earlier, uh, has really um, thinned those numbers uh which is why you haven't really been followed around by a parade of small furry creatures that are trying to ask why you feel fuzzy but um they are there so just to make sure you know that there's avenues uh in that regard what would jebel be focusing on over the next 14 days to prepare for a battle to the death against ancient dragons. Uh, so... Well, I was learning Draconic. Okay, good. I was working on potion making. Okay, yes, that's true. You are... That's true. You are... A large portion of your time would be uh, taken up there, but I, I leave it up to you. You know, I give you the, the option to, you know, free yourself of some of that as... as Vendar and his simulacrum are kind of uh, men driven by madness at times making these things. He was making... Was he making the grenades? Yes, he's making an absolute fuckton of grenades. So I mean, an inhuman well. number. <laughs> Hundreds. So I'm Hundreds splitting my time hundred. between learning Draconic, making potions, and helping Vendar make grenades. Okay. Just those three. Um, I can't think of anything else to do that would be more helpful or productive in that regard. Um, okay. Then I'll just say one more time, outside of preparing for the final, are you completely shutting out any other distractions? Like, are you actively not dealing with the the island's oceanic situation during this time, then? Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I can do there. 
I mean, it's one of those systems that just needs a guiding hand. Since it has had one for so long, it became dependent. So, with the loss of the previous oh, druid, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. it's been I, thrown I, into a I, little I bit of chaos. It will figure itself out, but there's a reason druids exist in this world, and that is to help maintain the balance of nature. So they are a guide, um, you know, a hand on the reins a bit, just to make sure that, you know, people aren't taking more than they deserve out of nature, and that even nature itself maintains its own internal balance. Um, you know, we'll just say that, like, that that balance of herbivores and carnivores that could be naturally maintained in our world, it's going to still rely a little bit on druids, just so that, you know, they're always working to keep the world uh, functioning. They're necessary. They're important. Yeah. Uh... Yeah, no, I remember that. I remember that conversation we had where uh, Dill was supposed to be finding a replacement druid. Yes, and she is working to that end, but there are only so many druids, and many of them already have, you know, the part of the world they take care of, so they'd be looking for somebody who was at your previous level when you were a lower level druid, who hasn't already taken up, um, a, a, you know, claimed a place that they are a guardian of. So those are going to be, you know, perhaps more abundant than master druids, but still, like, getting them to be broken away from where they were training to take over, as you had been training to take over um, the forests. Okay, yeah, I, I suppose I can... It wouldn't be a huge amount of time, a couple of hours yeah. a day here and there. It would help get you more familiarity with the area, help get them familiar with you, and you start to learn the things um, that the previous druid uh, did before she was lost. Um, and then, you know, by the end of the 14 days, you'll have a much better idea uh, if Jebel, you know, feels comfortable doing this or would want to continue it at all. But we don't have to speak on the the end result. Just know that he's he's learning a new job, basically. Mm. Just to you know, make sure that there's some spotlight on the fact that you're a druid. That's your job. Well, all right. So you are able to do those four things. Leah. Yeah. What would Leah be doing over the two weeks? A working? lot of things. A lot of things. I assume one of those is continuing training with the uh, Black Rose. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, they're getting more training. At the same time, Leah's also going to train on dagger and crossbow just in case she encounters a point where the magic fails her. Just to be prepared. Gotcha. Because you know how to use them. Like, you had the skill and the tools. So just, she's just going to practice. Um, because you don't use weapons often, so it's just nice to, you know, have a backup. Yeah. Um, and, uh, of course, she also continues, or, like, completes, I assume, uh, her elven lessons. Right. Finally, she can speak mm. the, the language of her father. Yeah. Um, and she's gonna keep up with her contacts, like checking in on Baronor during the night, considering she don't sleep, so you can spend some time during the night to use stream. All right, yeah. Um, and also, uh, through Lorelei, keep in contact with Sintaramel. So, checking in on what he's doing and uh, giving him every information she has about the situation. All right, then. So, to address those, um, this is a good time for it. Uh, the, the a dream with Baranor, um, you know, he might, be... might also use dream to check in on Claire. See how uh, Bromdor is doing. Let me deal with Baranor first. <laughs> yeah. Let me think about that one. So, with Baranor, 
Um, you had previously used Dream to give him the message about these things going on, the fact that he is a merchant who roves all over uh, Ebengard. Uh, he has the connections and he's the, the time and, and um, ability to get to these places and spread messages. So he was to be gathering allies, uh, you know, giving word and delivering supplies to support the efforts against the dragons that was going to be upcoming. Mm -hmm. uh, and so from him through Dream, you'll learn that he has been doing that. Uh, he's been going to the different towns on his normal trade route initially and was spreading these wor the, the words in the taverns, um, you know, gaining listeners and gaining friends and calling in favors with the people who supply him his wares um, and finding ways to uh, to get the word out that this fight is coming help is coming and that more aid, you know, more arms, more hands, more heads are going to help prevail in this battle. Um, so you find that he has managed, for the means he has, uh, to convince a sizable number of people to head there uh, and arranged through his own connections and mercantile uh, to get supplies like food and blankets uh, and weapons into the hands of these people heading toward uh, Watchtower Point. But you also learn from him that the battle has been going on while you've been out here doing your other tasks. Lionborn has led his soldiers across uh, Ebengard from Dragon's Hearth to Everwatch, uh, to Watchtower Point, excuse me, uh, and has been leading a campaign against these dragons, which is not going well. Um, you know, their losses are substantial. Lionborn is still alive, um, but their position is precarious, uh, and the dragons are not even really like. This was a, an attempt to push them out of um, Watchtower Point. Uh, and the dragons have given no ground at this point. The army has lost very little ground, but according to Baranor and the reports, the, the people that he's talked to, especially soldiers, it seems they feel that's only because the dragons aren't trying to take the ground from them. That they're holding their position and they're keeping the lands that they, they took when they, they landed, which is Watchtower Point and some of the surrounding lands, especially south of Watchtower Point. Um, he mentions that uh, the, the ground assaults are uh, harried wildly uh, by uh, white dragons uh, on the ground, uh, supported by blue dragons and red dragons from above, and their position beyond is held by absolute walls of poison and lakes of acid provided by the green and black dragons. So even if the soldiers could push further, there's no ground to take. So it sounds like it's going bad. Yeah. And it's been going for, you know, at least a month. Oof. Yeah, I, I will, of course, inform my uh, teammates about every, everything I learned. Yes. Um, but good news is the, the last thing Baranor knew. Uh, Lionborn was still alive and still mustering and, and keeping his forces going, but they simply weren't making progress. Um, he was, you, I'll remind you that he was joined by um, uh, legions from Aspara. So, he is not alone in this fight, but it seems like the, the lion's share of soldiers is going to be brought by you if you can maintain your control over the army of Bahamut the Tritons, and the Army of the Four Queens. Hmm. And it'll be the Battle of Five Armies! Nah. Six, if you count yeah. the dragons! <laughs> or ten, if you count each individual color of dragons! <laughs> you know what? Fuck you, Tolkien, we've got the Battle of Ten Armies! <laughs> Twice as many. <laughs> Because we're twice, twice as better. Episode, right? yeah. yeah. 
All right. Um. I'm sorry. Um. Zintharamil. Uh, as for Zintharamil, he tells you that he's been uh, also extending his fingers into deeper wells of power, and he has been gaining warlocks outside of you and I think it was Chip. <laughs> Or Dale. <laughs> One of the two of them. Fine, I'll check. Yeah, I cannot remember. <laughs> uh, I forgot he named it after Chip and Dale, even, so. <laughs> <laughs> that was you! Or me. One of the two of us. Oh, it might have been, yeah. That you makes made sense. a joke, I let it stick. Uh. <laughs> Storm Reef. Or luck. It was Dale. Okay. Yeah, so Chip was the one that's presumably eaten by a Kraken. <laughs> you may hope that. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. They had both originally been warlocks of Zephyr. Uh, one yeah. uh, converted, uh, traded in his, his pact with Zephyr for a, back, a pact with Zintharamil. Um... And the other uh, called him a traitor and jumped in the ocean. Yeah. Uh, so, as for Claire, you find that though you try several times, I imagine regularly, you aren't able to get a hold of her mind. Either she's not sleeping when you expect her to be, or she's using some kind of mental protection that is concealing her from you. Hmm. I mean, both of them are uh, options. I believe the second one is very likely, considering her position. It is possible that, uh, that Nalia or even she has developed some um, magical protection uh, for that. Um, but yes, uh, whether or not this concerns you is up to you, uh, but you you do not succeed in getting a hold mm. of Claire's dreams uh, despite many attempts. Yeah. It, it won't concern her immediately. It'll okay. just be like, okay, well, I tried. Uh, because I would know if they were dead, right? I'm not sure. Like, I'm not sure. Like, I don't think the book explains that in any way. I'm not uh, sure if you could uh, tell the difference between someone who is dead and someone who is simply not dreaming at the time that you attempt to reach for them. I think both mm. result in you are simply unable to connect. Mm. So it's certainly easier to assume that they are not sleeping, but there is always the other possibility. Mm. In which case, I would mention that to Laramendus and maybe ask him to check in on his girlfriend, making sure that everything is all right over there. <laughs> yeah, how are things with your girlfriend, Lair? <laughs> you didn't mention question. her at all. <laughs> it is true. And when I did last time, uh, we... Uh, Remembered the fact that Laramendus doesn't check in with, with her frequently, and she doesn't check in frequently with him. She is so certainly this is the norm, normal way. She's usually the first to ring the bell, isn't she? <laughs> but you do both have your lives, and you both do tend to respect one another's busy schedules. But you know, when you go a week without contact, you can probably count on the fact that she will reach out to be like, hey, you're not dead, right? <laughs> uh, I do think that Lara Mendes is probably uh, touching base with her on, probably every other day. Okay. Uh, just to keep her apprised of what's going on with the army. Yeah. And probably passing on any information from outside that he has he gains from his position so if you know leah wh whatever leah has shared about 
the situation in Ebengard probably gets passed on to Nalia. Okay. Yeah, I would actually want you to do that. <laughs> so... so if you're checking in every two or three days, then she's probably not going to be concerned about things at all. So everything's fine in that arena, at least. Um, <laughs> since we're dealing with this, she'll tell you that uh, Claire is alive and well and running the country, very busy all the time. Um, and, of course, the place uh, has been, you know, given the usual set of wards to try and yeah. protect the leader. Um, if she's... And she's all, she was also already a competent mage, so if she's devised some other ways of protecting herself from mental influences, like Dream, that would be unsurprising to Nalia. Yeah. I think that that's probably in line with what Laramendez would have told Leah and then just for the sake of confirming it so that he could confirm that, you know, she's alive, he would ask, but I think he would expect that it would be very difficult to reach a relatively powerful wizard or a leader of a country via dream without prior authorization on their part. <laughs> She does have, uh, and has always had, a uh, very unique access to the leader of Bromdor. Um, but again, the, the previous leaders of Bromdor were very specifically not mages. Yeah. Um, which is why they needed her and the Mages Guild. Um, it's rather unusual for, for mages to be the leaders of nations, just because of the power of the Mages Guild and the fact that all these nations yeah. want to make sure to keep it in check. People people are concerned. <laughs> and they honestly should be. <laughs> so, they're allowed to be advisors, uh, and even, you know, large uh, restrictions are placed on how far they can uh, push things, but this is all the politics that uh, Larabendus has endeavored to avoid <laughs> his whole life. His politics sucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look what politics did to the world. <laughs> if only they had made different political decisions, maybe people would have known what to do when the scales started disappearing. Mistress of Dragons, politics. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so that's that information. Cyrus. Uh, what is Cyrus' plan of action? 14 days. Language learn, uh, training, the like. He would be doing uh, some training to uh, uh, finish learning Sylvan and to uh, get some oh, excuse me, basic uh, wizarding lessons. Wizarding lessons. Well, given that Laramendus is working with the Tritons and they're teaching each other a lot of magic, that seems easy for you to tag along with. Yep. All right. Uh, Are you going to continue to be a, a draconic pincushion for the army to train on? Uh, yeah. Uh, in the evenings, though, uh, if his ninth ball slot didn't get used for something, he uh, do his uh, regeneration thing again, trying to get as many shapes in good shape as possible, or play as many troops in good shape as possible. Gotcha. So I would encourage uh, Jebel to do the same, as he can do it with more than just the ninth level spell slot. <laughs> so you can keep your troops do what? healing people oh, and yeah. giving them energy to continue training. In order to gain lost limbs. Yeah letting them train harder, and that's weird torture, I guess. Anyway, um... No, I, I don't mean, like, like they might have had previous injuries, is the general <laughs> idea. It's like if they're veterans or something. And the self eats eat someone's arm, and Cyrus is like, uh, regenerate. <laughs> so that's it what that feels like. It's extraordinarily difficult to fix. <laughs> well, then they, they should have never not to have their eating word for out the window. <laughs> Uh, yes. Oh, uh, and but with the exception of the last day before we uh, leave, being refreshing the uh, simulacrums. 
simulacra. <laughs> oh, fun then. A pillow fight. <laughs> um, very good. Uh, I will say that given that you spend a bit of time almost every day uh, helping Sotharis to train the soldiers against a uh, dragon, that um, she seems to uh, be more uh, open to talking to you over time, especially given your faux pas with her. Faux. My faux pas? Your faux pas. Your Could you pas. remind me of my faux pas? Um, how can you forget <laughs> the faux pas? How can you forget? <laughs> Look, it's been weeks since we've even played. Dude, cut me some slack. This would be the faux pas in which you appear to play. Yeah, the yeah, no, I, I remember. No, 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 now. now the audience needs to know. You're, you're suffering. <laughs> He appeared upon the back of Riken as though he was a surfboard while he was uh, in the middle of attempting to get it on with a dragon. Pepperidge and... Farms remembers. <laughs> Riken owns Pepperidge Farm. You bet he does. <laughs> uh, and then poof, poor Riken off to your mother's table. Yeah. I suppose that would be one other thing I would try to work in as a at least short trip home. <laughs> Fix your mother's table. <laughs> Fix her table. Explain myself. You know. <laughs> the okay, fact that you beef stroking off down her last then. time you were there. Oh, God. It was Make sure day. I deal with the um teleport book I left on our shelf. No, so she doesn't accidentally poof herself to Everwatch? Yeah. <laughs> You've got a lot of things for this poor woman. And your mother suffers so much. <laughs> I, he sends money home, he tries to chat. Like, he's trying. Look, what the, le the lesson never. here is that it is a costly decision to fuck a dragon. But it may yet be worth it. You. I have a question. Yes. All right. So, it hasn't really been used in a while, but my staff does the spell storage. Yes. So, I'm just wondering what... I have third level counter spell still on it, so which means I could have a one second level or two first level spells, so anyone have anything useful? I mean, let's see here. Um, I have detect thoughts, shatter, and detect magic. Misty step is a second level spell. My first, my first and second level spells are. Ooh. Oh, those are prepared. That's in my spell book. I was like, that's a small uh. list. Um, uh, alarm, comprehend languages, detect magic, expeditious search. Why the fuck do I have expeditious <laughs> Find familiar, identify page armor, magic missile, shield, tensor sorting disc, unseen servant, arcane lock. Continual Flame, Mental Repose, Invisibility, for now the second level spells after Arcane Lock. Uh, Melf's Acid Arrow, don't take that one. Misty Step, Nistel's Magic Aura, Rope Trick, Rope Trick's not a bad one. Uh, Scorching Ray, those are my first and second level spells, if any of those. Um, we're tempting. The shield, shield increases uh, your AC by like uh, five. That might not be bad. That's first level, right? Yes. So I could take that twice. I could have two charges of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to stick two shields on. Uh, and I think Laramendus would also Ooh. re Sorry. like Wrong. top off the yeah. counter spell in case it was cast before we got the last proficiency bonus. Alrighty. Uh, so that it's yeah. plus 11? Okay, so... <laughs> right. Fucking... Yeah, it was plus 10 last time, so... 
<laughs> only have to roll an eight on die <laughs> to counter a ninth level spell. <laughs> so fuck off. <laughs> so before we be got on to the staff, you were saying something about Saltharis opening up again. That she's just more talkative, specifically with you, because you uh, spend more time around her, even if you aren't necessarily, like, working hand-in-hand on anything. You're both kind of doing the same job, so your schedules are closer, and so, you know, you go to the, retire to the tavern at the same time. And it, in, in, in the first few days, there is that awkwardness of, you know... Uh, having uh, cock blocked her, but uh, eventually <laughs> she seems to um, warm up towards you again, uh, and and never mentions it. Of course, um, but of course, this never happened. <laughs> never happened. <laughs> uh, uh, but you you find that she you know mentions your. Uh, training with the uh, with the soldiers and your use of the draconic form and 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 gives pointers at first and later compliments. Nice. Uh, Sarah would be very appreciative of of those, as he's not been the most uh, martial in, uh, with his training. So mm. be able to uh, give a hand along it. Uh, he'll take some pride in that. Mm. Uh, but that's, you know, about as far as that goes. It's, you know, it's kind of there's this little bit of camaraderie building as you are sharing this job that you're both trying to uh, help the, the soldiers in the same way. Riken. Yes. Titular Riken. Always. <laughs> What is Riken doing with his 14 days? Um, Riken, with his 14 days, is going to, uh, you know, continue, uh, training, um... Gonna keep trying to beat Kubriel at races you can't win? Uh, you know, um... Yeah, <laughs> that's his personality. He's, he's I mean, if you keep doing up. it, you will get better and better. Yes. I mean, he also wants to train with her so that they, like, can, like, get super in sync with their battle tactics and whatnot while, while flying. So he wants to do that. But he also wants to keep training the... Army in uh, in fighting. Whenever you go to sleep at night and she's just sort of standing guard uh, in the room, she always nods to you and says bye bye bye. Bye bye bye. Because you're getting in sync. I was mm-hmm. gonna say. I was like, I feel like this is a uh, like all of a sudden Mike is gonna start dancing. <laughs> That's how she says good night. <laughs> um, the, the um uh, verbal components for Autoluke's irresistible dance. <laughs> bye bye bye. You have to you know do that hand thing. <laughs> that or like footloose or something. <laughs> Kick off your Sunday shoes, man. Oh yes. Um I don't know I can't recall. Did Riken ever get Lara Mendes, um, to give him back the necklace pendant, or... Oh, um... <laughs> I mean... Mustard it. So... I, for, I forgot. I, I, I know there was, like, some kind of thing where, like, they couldn't get it or something. You, so, you... When you ask for it, Lara Mendes is like, well, I... I can give it to you, <laughs> but he he's very hesitant about it. And then he reaches into his bag and he doesn't like, you know, like summon it in the, like he's actually like fishing through it. Like 
looking up and like feeling for something, which is a weird way to get something out of a bag of holding. <laughs> <laughs> and then he pulls out his hand, which is empty. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, I think this is it. <laughs> and he hands you the nothing. <laughs> right. You can tell right. there is there is weight there. <laughs> like that you can feel a chain. <laughs> but it's invisible. <laughs> I uh. think this is it. How many invisible <laughs> necklace chains have you got in there? <laughs> um, um I the the requirements to release it from the sequester are impossible to do before we deal with the dragons. I see. <laughs> but that is the necklace. I don't know. What is it? Very well. I will... Uh... <laughs> He's he's got, he's feeling the necklace and the pendant the whole time, like trying to remember if this is what it actually felt like. <laughs> he's like, I guess. Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess this is good enough. I will. I'm I'm going to con- go back to wearing it. Um, but do not worry. I have settled things and. There's not going to be any problem with this pendant. Claramendus will nod. Um, I think he'll inform you of the requirements to unsequester it. Um, which I think I only messaged to the DM. It's true. Um, but it's something along the lines of in the presence of Nalia, Laramendus says something along the lines of like i release you in every single language that he knows <laughs> uh, in a very specific order oh. <laughs> all right yes that, uh, uh i <laughs> this thing is not going to get unsequestered so <laughs> i i'm not going to attempt to try to get it unsequestered <laughs> um it is possible to dispel the spell if a sufficiently powerful wizard is aware of the spell to of the spell on it and that there is something to dispel. Uh, it is an extremely difficult spell to dispel. So that's like you what, two tries? <laughs> uh it, yeah, I mean, it would take Laramendus a much shorter amount of time to dispel it than most wizards. <laughs> I'm gonna, I was going to say, you're kind of the uh, the most powerful wizard here, so that's not happening. Here we go. I, I, I am just happy enough that you are willing to give it back to me, so thank you, Laramendus. Now, would talking to Nalia on Ash's hollow thing count as being in her presence? Uh, I think per the way that I worded it, no. I think I did specify, like, they were physically in the same room. <laughs> Laramendus himself. It was very elaborate. In the presence of Nalia, says first in Elvish, then Sylvan, then Draconic, then Common, then Dwarvish, then Undercommon, I release you. While holding the necklace between his hands, edited to include Sylvan and Draconic because I missed them. <laughs> so, Laramundus at the very least has to physically be there, and I think because of the word in the presence of, it's yeah. going to be interpreted she has to be there too. And I, I don't know that a video call will count. <laughs> you, can't, you can't zoom your way out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Riken will put the necklace with the pendant back on and kind of like put it down underneath his uh, clothes and armor. I like the comments, um, just like sort of in the middle rather than on either of the ends. I think that I... No, no. I think I went to do it in the order of languages that he learned. Hmm. He learned Elven, Sylvan, and Draconic before Common. 
I would be unsurprised if he had a better <laughs> grasp of Draconic before he be- he gained a grasp of Common. All right. <laughs> but he definitely learned Elvish and Sylvan first, mm. just because he lived in Feywild. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Common's just not as interesting. <laughs> it's very common. Okay. Uh, the only other thing that I have left is <clears throat> I don't know if you want to do this before we teleport the battlefield or after is the uh, um, calling the other two people um, that agreed to help us. The uh, warlocks? Warlocks, yes. Which, again, doesn't have to be anything. Like, it'll just be like, oh, yeah, and they called them. And they understand what they're doing. Yes. Um, you can call to them ahead of time if you wish, but they are able to transition to you rather quickly. Uh, so you would probably do it the day ahead just because you're not sure, uh, or even earlier than that, and they let you know. Um, well, you were given signals, right? That's right. Uh, yes. One was, um, an ocarina, and the other was a locket that has a rune that I can touch to call. Right. So, yeah, so the one on those is going to signal them, similar to the, um bracelet that Sotharis had given you initially um, and uh, you are uh, going to find that within a couple days of doing this uh, since actually it, it does make sense that you you now know you're closing in you'd probably do it just as soon as you, you, you have all the details um uh Within a couple of days of doing this, they appear on the island uh, where you can read them in on what's going on, and they say, All right, we will remain here until it is time to go, and we will travel with you uh, to this engagement, just as we promised. Sounds good. They're going to make it very easy for you. Um, so you know that you were only able to get two out of three of them, uh, because the other one... Uh, their goals do not align with yours. Yes. Two out of three ain't bad. <laughs> um, and, of course, uh, Halsey is uh, very pleased to be uh, back in your presence uh, as she uh, regales the rest of the party uh, with your singular battle that you shared together <laughs> in the Feywild. <laughs> At least Riken remembers this one. I think Laramendus is probably like slightly uncomfortable around the warlock <laughs> just because of the archfey connection. You and that's what we call being reasonable. Other than that, thanks to Laramendus, uh, Riken remembered to look at his spells and uh, you know, swap out one that he might not need since uh, he shouldn't need fine steed when Kubriel is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> I cast Fine Steed, Kuriel Waves. <laughs> I, I found her. Let's go. <laughs> She's a witch. It makes a beep like a car in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> the eyes flash like headlights. <laughs> all are terrible people. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's um, not even in Steed form. Yeah. <laughs> Technically, it should find you a new steed, since she's no longer a steed. It's right on her shoulders. But apparently this is funnier, so that's what happens. <laughs> Riken goes to cast it, just to, to have more assistance, and it does that, and then everyone's just like, well... <clears throat> never mind then. <laughs> Listen, I don't need to piss off Kubrio. <laughs> Again. It's usually dangerous to Piss off powerful celestials. Not a great yeah. idea. Especially since she's in her actual celestial form. She's much more dangerous. Oh. We're talking about Riken's strong suit, though. <laughs> <laughs> I 
didn't expect this. Went looking to make sure I was going to pull up the right name for the, the fae that um, these uh, warlocks serve and found that the Amaranta Fae document where I recorded all of them and how the ranks of Fae in the, in the courts there work is the same document that contains the stat block and powers of Brendan. <laughs> he is <Right>. technically Fae. <laughs> I, f I forgot that we just reused that file for it. <laughs> He's fake. <laughs> weren't the Empire Four Queens just beginning a hold of us too at some point, aren't they? Are they? Remember, right? I thought they were just meeting you there. Have I forgotten? It's possible I've forgotten something. All might be I'm misremembering too, though. Because I thought they were going to deliberate a little more and then get back to us. And then we had our stowaway soldier. Yes, he's doing great, actually. He was very, like, shifty when he first got there, really not trusting anything that was going on, uh, but, like, participating in everything, like, very clearly looking for the misdirects, looking for the trick of all of it, waiting for that other shoe to drop, very, very clearly can, uh, on the prowl, like, trying to prove to himself, like, all of this is a sham and you're trying to take advantage of his generals. Uh, and, you know, uh, after like a week and a half, he's he's completely forgotten that and is just getting really into training with the Tritons and, and all of these, um, you know, things that he hadn't specialized into in his army, but now he's just like gone back to being a nobody so he can do whatever he wants. Uh, so he's like learning uh, healing and, and uh, you know, medicines and stuff like that. <laughs> Um, he doesn't even, like, wear the, the emblems of his army since it's an extra thing. Like, he, they've got everybody else dressed in Bahamut's colors, so he just started wearing those to fit in better, and now he's, like, just, like, at one point, like, he would just, like, put it on over his, his, um, his other, uh, uniform, like, just sort of, like, <laughs> patching his way into being a part of the Bahamut's army, and now he's, like, got a, got his own, um, tabard and everything, uh, and he's not wearing the other stuff at all. Uh, so he's, uh, he's in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Are you saying, they, they, did he drink the Kool-Aid? It seems he so. Has, he has assimilated. <laughs> <laughs> Pelts are terrifying. Uh, but yes, Tristan, I believe one is from Lord Silvervine. And that's Evander. And the other one, Halsey, is from Baroness Elena Silva. Yes. I was like, I thought one of them was Laurel Still Blossom, but that was the wrong one. So, all right. Viscountess Silvervine Eventress. Eventress. Not from the Mistress, unfortunately. No. <laughs> Couldn't. She uh she didn't have anybody there. <laughs> they were busy getting books for. Her. She was getting her own books. She was busy getting books for herself. <laughs> One can never First have edition. too many. First editions. Loves those. <laughs> Nothing better. <laughs> and totally unique too. <laughs> Single run. Uh, but that's Riken's uh, 14 days, though. Yes. I don't know, Okay. And then, uh, Yukikaze, you told us that you were uh, getting your language and training, and that was good to go. So that's everybody. There's one person. Bruinor? I forgot him already. Hmm? Bruinor? Yeah. All right, tell me what Bruinor's doing. I wonder. Cranking out uh, levels. Is, Bruinor served in the army in part of town. Part of town. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. Like, have skirmishes. He has seen actual 
actual combat has yeah. been? Yes, he has. You, you'll you recall that it was actual combat that was his reason for being an unhappy camper. Yeah. Which is obviously not the only combat he's seen, but just remind you, he's definitely seen actual combat. combat. Yeah. So I think I, I like the idea of Brunor you know, is that um, the army of uh, Bahamut is going to need uh, there's going to be a little psychological trick to kind of get them motivated. So he's I th- he would be trying to talk to someone about marching music. Okay. Because that can get you pumped. True. So he's he's finding ways to get people synchronized and uh, 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 raise morale. Hmm. Right. Drums. Lots of drums. Big drums. Lots of big big, big drums. All right. They add that to the supplies they're having shipped in from um, Bromdor. And possibly um, bagpipes. Bagpipes. All righty. Is uh, Brunor going to play those bagpipes himself? Teach others no, how to Brunor do it? doesn't know how to play any instruments. Oh, well, okay. I thought maybe he'd know bagpipes. <laughs> but he gets bagpipes and tells somebody, you know how to play this. He just this. takes somebody and hands them to them and says, by the time we're fighting, you need to know how to play this. And just walks away. <laughs> I <laughs> expect somebody to like, send me I don't know what this is. <laughs> <laughs> A hand of bagpipes, which you wouldn't even recognize them as an instrument. All right, so one of you now needs to go get me a link to royalty-free bagpipe battle music that I can use for the combat. Okay, so that's your fourteen days in a nutshell. The things that you all focus in on to try and get your army and yourselves where you want to be before this final confrontation with the children of Tiamat. Now then, all of this is very intensive stuff. You're just sitting down and focusing in a way that you have often throughout this campaign have not had a chance to just sit down and focus on things. You're not pulled this way and that by these dire things. You're in the middle of it, and your only job is to get better. So I feel like I might have said this before, uh, but if I didn't, and only if I didn't, that I think everybody deserves two ability points to distribute as you see fit. Yeah. No, I never heard that. (laughs) How convenient. Well, ability scores are. One moment. Is that to a max of 20? Uh, Yeah, it's still to a max of 20. Uh, I can't get more dexterity then. Sorry. But it can help you round out something else you feel you should be good at. Yeah, I'm thinking too. I could remove my negative one in strength, but I also think I would want intelligence or wisdom to be higher. My intelligence is just plus one. If I add two there, it becomes a plus two. Mm-hmm. It's true. That's, that's not bad. Wisdom is perception, though. Wisdom is perception. All right. So, I'll give you guys a minute to think about that, but don't worry if you, by the end of that minute you haven't figured out where you want everything. And I want to move on to what will be the final scene of tonight. Today would be a good day to teleport. Yeah, yeah it's I a think good I'm day gonna, to gonna, teleport. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in wisdom. Uh-huh. Wisdom is only one away from now. 30 now. God. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> That's just uncomfortable. Like, for Vendar. <laughs> I can hear everything. I wish I couldn't. Yeah, it's a like a, like someone who gets super hearing and something. And like, I can't filter out anything. He's just like, buddy, I... I who's I, reading minds of everyone around them and can't turn it off and is just going mad. I need the sensory you input. to bathe in a different water source because I can see the protozoa on your skin. <laughs> <laughs> Lord Drachner is great. He gave us all soap and it's like fancy soap. <laughs> He's so nice. And he's just like, oh God. 
becomes a germaphobe. <laughs> you can hear no, them too, based, can't based you? On what, based and on what Lee has been spending them. her time on, and I was only one away from uh, leveling up Wisdom, I put one in Wisdom and one in Strength. So Strength That's isn't exactly leveled up, but if I get one more uh, ability score at some points, then it will become uh, equaled. My strength was 9 and my wisdom was 15, so I put one in each. Nice. Yeah. No longer so now I have a plus 3 strength. in wisdom. Yeah. I still have negative strength, but I have a plus 3 in wisdom. So that's nice. You know, it's okay to be bad at stuff. As long as you're super good at something else. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> See, I got the bonus of my charisma score isn't good, but I have the hat that makes it great. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I technically have two things that are, are odd. They're intelligence and charisma. But my intelligence being 17 doesn't matter because of the tiara. <laughs> You're a very pretty princess. But if it goes up to 18, then... My simulacrum gets smarter. <laughs> Is there any boost to HP if I do Mordor and uh, Constitution? <laughs> yeah, it does. I got 20 HP because I went into Constitution. I was choosing between Con or Charisma. Well, me, it's Con or Dex. Uh, if I bring, put it into Constitution, it brings my Constitution equal to my Dex. Or if I just want to make my Dex marks. But I really don't what know you what you use your dex for. Aren't you in heavy armor? No. Uh, well, now oh. I am, actually. I wasn't before. And also, I dual wheel. Beep, beep. beep. Dual wielding doesn't have anything to do with dex, though, does it? Uh, no. Not if he's using, like, long swords. Yeah. He has dual wielder, which means he I, could I, dual wield no. long swords. I I can no. Uh, remember that's why I had yeah. Sumimaru, Kiba, yeah. or, yeah, Sumimaru and uh, Kibamaru. Oh no, yeah, Kibamaru, which I had to give away. Cause you fuckers. <laughs> it's because you love the you, party. And... Yeah, you actually and you actually cared about things. <laughs> 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 Caring is a weakness. <laughs> it can be exploited by red dragons. Despise therefore. your heart. <laughs> if you don't care about anything, then you don't have to give anything away. If you love nothing, they can't take anything from you. <laughs> this is a good existence. Why are you all crying? <laughs> it's because you care too much, that's why. See how I'm not? I don't know how much Dex. I don't remember how much Dex played into it, but I also want. I was also building my character to be like very good with weapons, so I built the Dex for like throwing daggers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It also initiative is not a terrible thing to yeah. Add. Your initiative will go up with Dex. So oh, God. It's, you're good at HP or you're good at Dex, but uh, both are good choices. So which do you want? Well, I already have a. Huge initiative. Right. Somebody's got alert. Yeah, I know. I'd be on par with freaking, or it'd push me more toward uh, Vendar uh, there. Keep yeah, up. Plus, with no, no one can match Vendar for. It's pretty hard. Twenty decks plus alert. Twenty decks and alert. <laughs> what are you up to? Twelve now. No, uh, plus ten is the max you can get. Oh, well, I'm only two hundred. You then. Nice. I've embraced my minus one initiative for the whole campaign. I think, <laughs> I think I want to do HP just to have the more health. Okay, go for it. It's gonna be I useful. I, <laughs> I think it would be the smartest for me. My, I am trying to justify that to myself, but I don't think Laramendus has done anything this past week that would relate to Con boosting Con. He's like, I'll just get smarter, I guess. <laughs> I, so I, I I was looking. I'm thinking wisdom would be nice to go up to twelve because part of what he's been doing is the paying attention to how the teaching is being done. So like essentially to boost his insight. Okay. My con saving throw is plus fifteen. So good luck breaking <laughs> me out of concentration. 
get. <laughs> do 32 points of damage in a single <laughs> hit <laughs> which is not outside the realm of possibility in the fight that's coming at you how <laughs> how does he have 15 in his con save by being a paladin oh yep they get big uh, pluses like to all of their saves save is wisdom and that's 11 yeah my deck save is only 11 my wisdom is also 11, my charisma is 13, and my strength is 10. My dex and my intelligence are the two that suck. Those are your saving throws. Yes. Oh, God. <laughs> Pal Paladins get their charisma bonus added to all of their saving throws. Uh, fair enough. I don't get to add anything to mine except... What, and his charisma bonus is 3, right? Yes, my charisma is, is 3, <laughs> plus I have... Um, another one because of uh, the cloak. Uh, yeah, and then my proficiencies all add up too. Well, if you think about it, you, you want a pal to be able to do that because they're going to be their 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 meat shield. They throw their their body into the mix. Yeah, that's why I also figured I, it would be nice to have another twenty HP to go up against these dragons. Yeah, I might be able to take another half of a hit. Especially if apparently doing 32 points of damage that I actually make me have to make me roll. I'm excited about the dynamite. So <laughs> much damage. <clears throat> Alright, what's the last scene? Alright. Alright. Your 14 days, well, your 13 oh, days can... Hold up, hold up, hold up, sorry, apologize. I want to change something before we go. Um, because I don't want... We're dealing with poison dragon. The, the, the dragons that we know are going to be there are poison. We poison know that all acid. types of dragon are there. Really don't want to deal with poison the most. I want to change my uh, armor's element to poison, Tristan. Before we go, uh, okay. You get to do that as like a reaction, free action, uh, once a day. So no problem. Yes. Yeah, make a suggestion. What's that? Uh, the red dragons are generally considered strongest, and so the fire breath and weapons are likely going to hurt the most. And also. I still like the other friendly fire volume. I do also have small grenades that will give resistances. You should probably tell them about those. Yes. I have small grenades. I have uh, some that will give fire and poison resistance and some that will give cold and acid resistance. I've also supplied those to the army. And I have some for personal use in the party, too. So. How long do they last? They last half an hour. Oh, that's right. I only get resistance to your so That won't make me immune to poison, right? No, you get immunity. I do get immunity. You're yeah. with the full Bahamut set. Oh, I, you I have put... immunity to your base element, which in your case is cold, and to one other element. I clicked the wrong one. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Thank you. But, yeah, that, that's why uh, that's why Derek is, would like you to be wear red because then you're immune to fireball. <laughs> so you can just fireball the crap out of everything. It's, it's very uh, moralizing for an army to see their dragon companion fireball their commander. <laughs> And then have oh, just walk away like walk it was out nothing. Of the fire heroically, <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> yeah, he didn't even look at it. He just kept going. <laughs> Man, he's going. Cool. So down. I guess. You know, I, I was like, um, I definitely looked at it. I was right in the middle of it. <laughs> I would say a good dialogue would be: I would have consulted the group, thinking, you know, like what would be a good idea. And then uh, Cyrus could have suggested that, and I've been like, okay, and I will. Keep fire, then. 
<laughs> I also have a aura of purity spell that I can put on when we're facing poison dragons that isn't oh. immunity, but it gives resistance to poison damage with a 30 foot radius. Yeah. Okay. Sorry for interrupting you, Tristan. I'm ready. I also have some other cool small grenades. Like, I have ones that give us haste, and one that gives us, and some that give us fly, and some that make us invisible. And then I also have one that gives us the strength of fire giants. 25. Damn. Ooh, Sorry, almost with 25 good strength, strength. And I have. I still have a potion of cloud giant strength that gets me to 27. <laughs> Saving it for this occasion. Oh yeah, I am popping it in this fight. <laughs> We're popping everything in this fight. <laughs> that's, that's what I expected. <laughs> I, I still have a potion of speed. I'm just afraid because it wears off in one minute, and then I'm freaking not feeling great. It's only one turn. <laughs> <laughs> one minute is one turn. No, I, I meant the negative effect. You get. Ah. You get, what, ten rounds of double action, and then one round of you can't do anything. One round of lethargy. Alright. So. You complete your 13 days of training, and on the dawn of the 14th day on Storm Revile, as the sun still sits below the horizon... You gather your 13,000 soldiers, give or take, due to addition and attrition over the last two weeks. The rolled sails on their masts creak on the ships in the bay of this island as the army lines up in ranks uh, on the beach back toward the town as you establish who's going when and what's being transported and how, where the teleportation is going to occur and how quickly everyone needs to move. They've been drilling this. They know what to do. You're ready to go. I believe this is a Leah and Lara Mendes joint casting to make this work. I think Cyrus is also involved. Okay. So, does Cyrus know Demiplane? Or... Yes, I know that name. Okay, okay. yeah. Cool. So yeah, it's it's all three of us. Okay. Wonderful. So it's even more spectacular as the three of you get up in front of the, you know, 13 ranks of soldiers here. 130 ranks of... Anyway. And begin your very flashy casting, creating a demiplane, creating a portal to the demiplane, getting them onto the demiplane, creating the portal off of the demiplane. And telling them, march, as they go in one portal, through a 30-foot box, out the other portal, into the snow. Mm. The wind howls around you as you arrive in Ebengard. It is bitterly cold. I believe that, other than Leah, none of you has ever been to Watchtower Point. I know the place well. And I've taught the army, and I assume also a part of this uh, party, like, how to navigate the streets in the illusion that Vladimir has made. Yes. What you see before you, all of you, is a ruin. You recognize this place as a f shadow, as a warped mirror image of what you left behind, what was it, a year ago, Leah? Mm, I guess... Six I months. guess we have been there around a year. <laughs> Six months, I half mean, a year. You, yeah, I mean, you traveled a little bit with Bruinor chasing down the legends of these guys, gaining levels, and then met up with them, and you were all, like, level four when you got together? Yeah. I think four or five? Yeah, around there. So, uh, yeah. Um, you see this 
peninsula rising away from you like a shallow uh, sloped mountain as this point, you know, seems to just jut off the end of the continent over the ocean and rises from the sea. And what you see on it is this smattering of buildings, intact ones along the edges, and in the middle of the center of the city, you just see rubble and destroyed trees and fallen statues and corpses and dragons. As the city rises away from you to the northeast, you see that there is one main spire, a building uh, crafted of stone, uh, large slabs of stone stacked higher and higher, which form this massive lighthouse, uh, which gives light Watchtower Point its name. Um, the signal flame is out. Uh, but you can see, wrapped around the upper portion of the tower, this massive red dragon. And when I say massive, I mean it dwarfs every dragon you have witnessed, even from this distance. This huge distance. I remind you that you are way over here. <laughs> even from this massive distance you can feel the scale of this creature. And between you and it, the, rem the remnants of the city along the cliff's edge, uh, as the rock tumbles down toward the water, you can see the destroyed boats filling the harbor, the few boats still intact, no signs of life on their decks, no indication that they are moving goods or have arrived recently or will depart at any point. The place feels like a ghost town. But directly ahead of you, you can see a cloud, a green cloud of poison, a miasma gathering in the center of the, uh, f the closer portion of the city. Uh, low enough that it does not obstruct your view of the higher parts of the city, but you can see the shadow of a massive dragon within that cloud and above just so that i don't mislead you that there are only these four dragons that i, I have the tokens for the whole place is lousy <laughs> for lack of a better term the place is lousy with dragons there are each color seems to be divided up and, you know, more or less nesting together. But like crows circling above, uh, uh, you know, potential uh, food source on the ground, you just see dragons on the wing. And even without counting, you know, there are hundreds of young and adult dragons flying around this place. And all of them are dwarfed. They look like birds compared to the four massive dragons that each seem to have claimed a portion of the city. And because the city slopes up away from you, you can see each of them surrounded by their element, clearly exulting and claiming their home there. And as the army, you know, comes forth from the portal and reforms their ranks around you. I have those two tokens there as well. Um, you're going to see that the dragons circling above seem to wheel in the air and head back toward the bulk of the main portion of the city, clearly going to inform uh, the rest of the brood of your arrival. The sky is overcast with clouds and fat flakes of snow silently strike the ground around you as the 
air fills with the sound of leathery wings. A rolling thunder as all of these dragons take to the air. Are they moving towards us or are they just sort of milling about? They seem to be doing the flyer equivalent of forming ranks to mirror your army, uh, so to say. They are clearly preparing to attack, but sort of waiting for your approach. Waiting for you to uh, uh, violate their ooh, sovereign master. border. <laughs> Leah and Laramendus and Cyrus and Riken. I am going to just gently nudge Laramendus in, I don't know, the thigh, I guess. And I say, um, should I soften them up before we go in? What are you thinking? A little spell I know called Storm of Vengeance. I mean, that sounds impressive. It's like a <laughs> 720 foot diameter storm that is within range of sight. I mean, is the plan to charge immediately? Is the Empire of the Four Queens army here? Yes. They are, uh, this smaller one, because they only have 10,000 soldiers occur, uh, compared to your 13. <clears throat> Which, uh, just using native sizes of the images I went and found, um, that's how they ended up. I was gonna make this one your army, because they looked a little bit more ragtag. <laughs> and, uh, these guys, the uh, Army of the Four Queens, but they either got sizes that were more appropriate to those of the soldiers, which, obviously... Not quite, <laughs> but um, better than, you know, Colossal, which would have only been this big. <laughs> but this is mostly just so that I can kind of put them out on the field to, to illustrate the soldiers are fighting. It's still going to be about yeah. you guys. Okay, also, I'm going to hand Yukikaze a bundle of five dynamite and tell him to shove it down Karasov's throat when he gets the chance. Yeah, it'll be great to see her use her breath weapon with that in there. How do I? That's the goal. Did you ever? Did he? Did, I'll be like, well, out of character. Did, he, did you ever describe how to use these? I assume I mean, I've shown people how they work. All of okay. yours work on a fuse, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right then. I want to see that go off inside Karasaw's throat. <laughs> So, you arrive, the dragons take to the sky, the army of the four queens, which was already there, marches forward into position next to you. Their generals uh, come from the rear to the side to uh, meet with you. They inform you that they've been here just uh, a couple of hours uh, awaiting your arrival. And it seems that the dragons are aware this thing's about to begin. So, do you have any final orders for them? Any words of wisdom to pass on to either of your armies? I don't have a speech planned out, so I would just like to add a little bit, if that's okay. Just say that I, I do it. So, I will, inspiring leader, use my skill. Uh, oh, <laughs> finally! And I will say how these dragons have, you know, like like the the followed slightly close to the the speech I gave before. Like these dragons have destroyed our homes. We're here to end their tyranny and send them back from whence they came to never bother us to never bother us again. And we have trained hard and worked hard, and it's all the sum of everything we've done is for this day of glory and for the triumph of our families, friends, and villagers. This will give everyone a temporary, uh, a temporary twenty-two HP. Pretty significant. Ooh. Temporary twenty-two HP. Mm-hmm. 22 temp HV. Oh, everybody who hears the speech. Now I'm over 250. 
Jesus. <laughs> how, much, how much temporary HP did it save us? 22. 22. 22. 22. Okay. That puts me up at 190? 255. Well, there is a range, Chris. It's not everyone. Oh, wait. No, it is limited. It's going to be our party mainly. Yeah. But everyone's going to hear it. Because it does choose up to six allies, including yourself. <laughs> and there are so who are you leaving out? Uh-oh, who are you so leaving out? I'm going to I'm gonna leave Riken out. Oh, fuck that. He doesn't need the help. He it's, doesn't you it's, don't need hey, the help. Hey. Don't need the help. He's throwing out at least 32 damage hey. on us at, at points. Hey. It's the final battle. Everyone <laughs> who hears this speech gets the HP. Nice. So that so that's DM's judgment. There you go. <laughs> you're like only get your extra right? inspiring. <laughs> I get a bonus. <laughs> Cause I I'll get I'll be up in the air with my wings spread out. My my sword and shield stretched out, you know, in the fist pumping air. Maybe have someone do some little light effect on me as I'm in the air. <laughs> I think we can certainly swing whatever uh, magics that you want for emphasis. <laughs> light just goes on and off. <laughs> You give this speech, the armies cheer. They are empowered by your words. All of them, including these people who have not known you, the Empire of the Four Queens. Um, stirring, one would call you. And you see that the dragons wheeling in the air above are going to be you know, spiraling in their own smaller groups, like miniature tornadoes high up. Um, and you see a ripple pass through them. They kind of dip in the air momentarily, and you feel this wind roll over you, and it quietens all of the soldiers in your army. They mid cheer just it starts to die. the voices die away as everybody kind of checks their balance as this as they're buffeted by this hot wind. Can I just give out I'll give out a roar. You roar. You feel that this is a good roar, but even still, it's as though this wind pushing against you kind of swallows it almost and subdues this roar. And in the wake of this wind, as the last dregs of the buffeting pass amongst the soldiers and the snow on the ground curls uh, away uh, into its last um, shoots, you hear this deep baritone laugh. followed by words that are loud as though you're being spoken to, as loud as the speech that was just made, audible to everyone here, despite that the speaker is nowhere nearby. You can see the brilliant orange glow of the maw of the red dragon curled around the lighthouse as he speaks. And he speaks in common as he says, Oh, you finally arrive and we can finish this. <laughs> Return, Whitemere, to us, so that we may begin. And I'm calling it there. Is it like a good call? Oh, call, call, call it. <laughs> What's that? 
I say it seemed like a good spot to call it. Yeah, it is. That's where I wanted to end it. So, final battle. How many sessions do you think we'll get? Place your bets. <laughs> uh, six. Uh, six. Six. Oh, damn. How many six? <laughs> Thinking more than that. <laughs> I mean, six is still going to be like the rest of this year. It should not be that yeah. long for six. Y'all just need to put your schedules together. Well, we like next next uh, week we're already in November, so that's four weeks into November. Yeah, and then, uh, you're right, I don't like yeah, that. Yeah. December is a uh, in December oh, is a nightmare. Yeah. yeah, if if we manage to not have like not skip any Tuesdays, then the the, the, the sixth Tuesday is going to be December tenth. So six can work. Um, we'll see. <laughs> I don't have any more plans for uh, until until. Uh, well, I mean, Tuesday twenty fourth is kind of like yeah, obviously not that one. <laughs> so until seventeenth, I don't have any more plans that will bother the campaign. So we'll <laughs> see. We'll see what we can do over the coming weeks. But... That is the end of the beginning of the end. And all that lies ahead is the final battle. And the conclusion of our ten-year-long campaign. Dun, dun, dun. <clears throat> and, uh, uh, I assume you're going to have, like, a small, um, like, post-battle scene, like, a, oh, yeah. what is it called? A an epilogue? An epilogue. An epilogue. <laughs> epilogue, yes. Just like see where our characters end up if they don't die. And if they die, see where the world goes to shits. Yes. There will uh, be as long know. as we got <laughs> Riken or Jebel still a lot. <laughs> there is going to be a denouement on an epilogue uh, at the conclusion of the battle. Uh, assuming that you prevail, hopefully yeah. you prevail. Uh, you still need to have your meeting uh, with your uh, secret ally. So next session we begin with the Vengeful Storm Meteor Swarm. Uh, seems so. And rolling in this Soften today. up some targets for your army, which is great because hundreds of dragons is kind of a lot. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even for 23,000 soldiers. <laughs> Just in here making me wait and wait and wait to finally get to roll my goddamn LED D20s. I'm sorry. <laughs> it just doesn't occur to me to ask for rolls sometimes uh, when we're just kind of talking through things. I just think how sweet it will be when you finally get to and you roll a one. <laughs> I know, when I roll a nat one initiative with one of them. <laughs> All right. Everybody goes, and then Riken is last. <laughs> I'll use them. I, I will, the final battle if it doesn't function that way. I will use a fucking mulligan. <laughs> it rolls a second one. <laughs> Inspiration, a third one. That's just <laughs> impressive at that. This <laughs> <laughs> is no... nice in the way. Oh, for oh. Bendar, you know his initiative can't be anywhere slower than eleven. <laughs> where is, that is, where's, that is the, uh, where's the orphanage on this map? Mine uh, can only. Can't be any lower than nine. It was there. I'm waiting to see. It won't be yeah, for okay. long. Oh. And I imagine everything's destroyed at this point. Yeah, I mean. And that was already I mean, everything... destroyed. So. It was already destroyed when I left it. But it seems like <laughs> a dragon has uh, decided to reside there. So. Yeah. So <laughs> just. To... Sharon's nest, yeah. <laughs> just to just to show you more close up, I I did manage to I put time and effort into this map, and I, you know I, it's hard, okay? Yeah, uh, I think it was good. But you can what I wanted to show is that their buildings are mostly intact along the edges of the cliff on either side. Um, just because of your knowledge of dragons, you would know that 
Karasoth the Red Dragon would not allow his siblings to kill everyone here because his whole purpose is to rule over people. So there are still people alive here. Uh, is Bala in front? Bala is in front. Okay. People living in this she doesn't. <laughs> she doesn't know somebody with a vendetta against her is coming for her. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Bala's never you heard of you. Family, you'll have to be more specific. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if you can repeat Wait. the super crit. That means you probably have to give a bonus for Riken's initiative because he'd be enraged like a berserker. I'm gonna get you, you son of a. <laughs> oh yeah. I have it all. He gets to go first out. against Bala, but then he automatically goes last against the other ones. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't have a fucking clue who you are. <laughs> yeah, heard of you. She'll have a clue when she's dead. <laughs> you took Will everything from me. I don't even know you. <laughs> For you, it was the most important day of your life. For me, it was. Uh, laundry day. I think it was a. I think it was a Wednesday when I got out of the forest. So it was probably <laughs> Thursday when I destroyed somewhere in there. A the dragon of, leans over of, and whispers, and she's like, "A Monday, really?" Monday's a terrible. Says a, bla a black dragon decided to reside in the orphanage. I wonder if it notices like remnants of the energy that was there. <laughs> mm. Because there likely were a lot of like. Demonic energy released when Leah went well, supernova. <laughs> it's like a massage yeah. chair. Mm -hmm. So, quick question <laughs> How wide is the space between the intact buildings that the dragons kind of have in a line there? What, like this space here? Pretty much. Um. 15, 20, 20, 30, 30, 40, 40, 40. I, I would have a measure tool, sorry. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, thirty. And call it, you know, a hundred fifty feet. Excellent. Just wide enough for meteors. <laughs> hey, Storm Vengeance is gonna fuck those people up. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why they're in the houses. The storm can't get them. I think it'll Until have the it. dragon falls on it. Ugh. It'll be um interesting what you guys are willing to sacrifice to win here. I have always liked the idea that uh, Jebel is very pragmatic. Jebel is very pragmatic. We are aware of the the fact that there are people still living in here? Yes. Again, like I said earlier, you know that the houses that are not destroyed will be inhabited, likely with some of the people from the destroyed houses, because the Red Dragon, his whole purpose is to rule over other creatures. He would not allow his siblings to kill everyone. He would let them kill some people, obviously, but not everyone. So you know there are people here. And there's probably Jebel's a sizable about... number of them. Devil's all about nature, right? If he has to destroy a city to kill some dragons, that's just a bonus. I mean, if he if he takes after Minuet Kuvara, absolutely. <laughs> oh, he's a druid also. He's like, freaking these bastards kill my nature all the time, so what's the matter? <laughs> Sometimes sacrifices must be made. <laughs> or you could do the golden rule. Survival of the fittest. Oh my goodness. If we were oh, doing that, then the dragons would be in charge. Not if we kill them. <laughs> they wouldn't. Exactly. Oh, yeah, I thought the golden they rule would treat others fittest. how you would want to be treated. Okay. So, with that, the stage has been set and the battle shall commence. Next time on Everybody Loves Riken. Yay. Bye, stream. Bye. 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 Bye.